Technology. It's everywhere. It has been and will always be a big role to our daily lives, especially in our generation. Technology, such as software applications, are used by millions of users at the same time on a global scale. Because of that, have you ever wondered in how are these apps are made? Or maybe, have you ever thought of making one yourself? Stay tuned and I'll show you how to build a mobile application using one of the newly introduced language by Google. Dart That is used to code Flutter apps. What's beneficial about Dart is that it is not only used for mobile application for both iOS and Android, but also can be used for desktop applications and web applications. But before creating anything, let us first download and install the Android Studio ID. Go to developer.android.com slash studio and download the ID for Windows or Mac. I prefer Android Studio since it offers a complete, integrated ID experience for color apps. After downloading, click and install the app. Then, set the directory for your Android Studio projects and click Install. Hit Finish. Now, we have to set up our IDE based on our preferences. Click Next. Choose what mode you would like to work on. I choose dark lamp because I prefer to work in the dark. After that, click finish. We have already installed the idea on our computer. Now let's go to settings, plugins, and install the plugins needed for dark and Flutter. This would require you to restart the ID to finish the installation. Now that everything is settled, let us now create our very own Flutter application. Click Start a new Flutter project, then choose Flutter application, then hit Next. Then, set the name for an app that should be all lowercase letters. Then, set the path for Flutter SDK. If no Flutter SDK is installed in your PC, then click Install SDK Path. For this tutorial, let us create a simple timer application. So here is your workspace. You don't have to know all the parts of the workspace of the ID at first. You only have to keep in mind of the project manager where you can navigate through different files. The editor window where you will code the toolbar at the top that lets us carry a wide range of actions and at the tool windows at the bottom gives us access to specific tasks. The entry point of your application is this, your main.dart file. Now that, let's delete everything and start coding. First, import the packages needed. For our application, we only need the material.dart and dart async. Now, create a void main that calls timer app or our app name and runs it. Then, Create the timer app class that extends the stateful widget. Then create the timer app state that defines the state of your application. Then, initialize the needed variables. The static keyword indicates that the variable can be accessed globally. We have initialized an int a variable which is called seconds pass and a boolean code which is, is active that has an initial value of false. Then, we have to set the timer control. The package that we imported a while ago which is the dark async handles this control. 
In here, we created an if statement that if the value of the is active variable is true, the seconds pass variable will be incremented by one. And the handle tick is called inside our widget build. And after that, the variable seconds, minutes, and hours are computed as shown. The package is not being read. Hmm. Oh, there should be a snap space. Should be a space there. Then inside the material app, we will lay out the widgets needed for the user interface. In Flutter, everything is a widget. Images, icons, and text. In a Flutter app, are all widgets. Even layout elements such as the rows, columns, and grid that arrange, constrain, and align other widgets are widgets themselves. The good point is, Flutter SDK creates an interactive widget at the root of the application here itself. Inside our material app, we had a widget called Scaffold that has an app bar in the body. The app bar consists of a title called, this is a time timer. For the body, it has a column that has a child row and that is aligned in the center. The rows will have three children containing our timer in hours, minutes, and seconds. Before we go and style the components, it is advisable to create a separate class called custom text container with the handles this type. This class will have two parameters called label and value that will be passed in our main class name. I am not very good at user interfaces, but let's start with this. Instead of having a plain text widget, we will pack it inside a container and decorate the container with a background color along with a padding to space out the elements. We will also set the border to circular with a width of 10 points. Then, we will style out the text inside the container. After that, we will pass the parameters to our main class. Hmm, our variables can't be read. There might be a pop. Oh, it shouldn't be inside the if statement. Next is, we will create a raise button that displays either stop or start if our bool variable code is active, is true or false. Then, next is we will review the code and edit the final changes. And it is done. Let us connect our mobile phone and run the application. And here is the output and that will be Thanks for watching.